Hello everyone and welcome back to another Getting Stuff Painted, my bi-weekly update, give or take on the miniatures I've been painting here for the channel. Got a fair assor assortment, rather, mostly Modifius uh, for a change, which uh, I don't think I've ever done in this series so far, where they've got the lion's share. But, not all of it is the Modifius resin that does the thing, TM. I, I got, we'll talk about that as we go, I suppose. So. From left to right we have some Fallout Wasteland Warfare, we have some Warhammer Underworlds in the form of an entire warband, and then we have some Elder Scrolls Call to Arms. So hopefully got a lot to talk about with different varieties, bases, colours and all that good stuff. As per usual though, everything done in contrast uh, with a grey sear base, no exceptions this time at all. But let's talk in detail from left to right. So let's start with three out of five of the base core box for the gunners for Wasteland Warfare. By the way, if I sound a little bit congested, I apologize. It's dank, it's dreary, I think I have a cold. We've had our three government mandated days of sunshine, which classed is classed as a Scottish summer. So now it's just rain and cold and wind and horrible. Anyway, so yeah, it's a box of five. There's still two more just box standard guys. I think one of them's a sergeant, but the rest are like, um, they're not called grunts, but you know, like the gunners have kind of like a militaristic hierarchy. I, I forget offhand what they're classified as. And they have a commander here in some refurbished, well, power armor that has not been cared for at all because it's exceptionally similar to raider power armor. And they're kind of like organized raiders. So when I was picking which colors to use for these, I drifted a little bit from the official colors in terms of their bog standard armor color because they just kind of have military green but I've already kind of used that for some NCR soldiers I've painted in the past so at a glance I wanted them to be a little bit different so for these two grunts which we shall now there we go the tripod has now actually done what it's supposed to do is it's very kind of stuck I don't know why I need to loosen up a bit anyway that's besides the point as I was saying about the colors I wanted to use a different green to militarum green even though that would probably be more fitting if you wanted something that is more representative of how they look in Fallout 4 but what I went with was Mantis Warrior Green and I kind of created the impression that I've applied a second colour here but I haven't really. What I did was I did a dry brushing of Army Painter Rust and then over the top of everything else after I was done with a uh, Gulliman Flesh for the skin tone and Lead Belcher Silver for the, the gun with some snake bite leather. I just did Agrat Zero Shade over everything and it kind of looks like I did like a military camel almost and like the, the, I've painted the belts brown I haven't that's just a dry brushing of the rust on top of Mantis Warrior Green and I actually found it to be a pretty effective way of like especially you know at this kind of distance it, it looks like I've taken more care and more like precision painting of all the straps and the buckles and stuff than I actually have and I think that's actually for models of this scale and this size and this uh, detail as long as you're doing washes afterwards which will help you know hide mistakes and fill crevices it works really well I'm, i was kind of impressed with how it came out i did the same for this guy although his armor is a bit more prevalent uh he's got a bit thicker stuff on they come into focus any second now when you're ready buddy i think that is now there we go uh, but even still it looks like yeah i probably it, if I had to pick a colour, use snake bite leather to go around these straps on his legs here or on his armband. I haven't. It is purely just a dry brushing. So if you know you're going to do washes afterwards and you want that grimy wasteland look, it's actually a, a corner you can cut that I think honestly ends up better looking than me with my shaky hands trying to like precisely pick out those straps. So yeah, I'm happy with how it looked. I'm going to use the same technique for the last two I've got to do. The only difference is the one in power armour of course, because the power armor is not green and is also rusty. But I used the same army painter rust. That's just on top of a bunch of lead belcher silver. I used the exact same technique, although I applied it a bit thicker in terms of the rust uh, way back when I painted the Raider in Raider power armor. Yeah, it's in this series somewhere. But this one isn't quite as poorly cared for as that one was. I also kind of accidentally left a bit too much silver showing on this leg, but I kind of like it because it's like the under skeletal thing of Power Armor. If you've seen Destroyed Power Armor in Fallout 4 or 76. So I kind of like that from this angle because when you turn it to this angle, it's actually just fine. Like it did correctly apply the rust. It's just I, I kind of I did it too lightly on the inside of that leg. But if the light catches it right, I kind of like the visual effect. Uh, in terms of anything else on him, it's just silver with ooh, striking scorpion green for inside the plasma gun and a little bit of yellow. 
Oh no, I forgot to do the red dot at the back of the, the fusion core that's powering his armor. I'm pointing at the wrong bit. It should be there. Actually, did I do it and it's maybe just too dull? No, I totally forgot. I did the yellow. I can see the hint of yellow. I forgot to do the red dot to show it's powered on. That's going to haunt me until I fix it after I finish recording this. <laughs> so I'm glad I looked at that. Uh, I use Miller's Arm Green for the crate he's standing on just because in the official paint job it's that kind of colour. And for these bases I've just used Snake by Leather, Basilic Arm Grey and Agra Sorshade. So simple as that, just three miniatures for Wasteland Warfare this time. But in the next update you should see the other two from that same gunner's box. So pull back a bit now to talk about Elthanes, El Elthans. I, I kept on pronouncing it wrong in the video as well, I think that they've already been in. I think it's Elathene. Elathene's Soul Raid. For Warhammer Underworld, this is a old warband for the game. Uh, I guess around about Darkasm, but I'm not 100% sure on that. But this was actually gifted to me by a friend who just found it, and uh, I don't think it's been produced for a while now. So, uh, not up to date with all the newer releases, so the power creep might affect them a little bit. They've only been on the table once, so I can't really speak to that. But I got to paint a giant fish and a giant crab, so I'll take that as just being interesting. Although the armor for these water elves, I don't remember their official name, <laughs> sorry. Uh, they didn't exist when I was even moderately into Warhammer Fantasy in, a, in the form that they exist today anyway. But their armor proved a challenge to try and get anywhere close to the official paint job. I don't really think I achieved it as well as I would have liked, but I did what I could with the colors I had available. Let's talk about the fish first. And for the crab, actually, I used, I believe it's called Magnadron Orange or something like that. It's one of the new range of contrast paints from Citadel. It's their kind of reddish orange, and it's I, I, I like it better than Griffin Orange. I, I feel like it's got a bit more life in it. Also, I'm noticing there's been a bit of paint chip there, hasn't there? There's a single white, is that just, yeah, it actually has just, it's been a bit of paint that's chipped, chipped rather. Or maybe um, like a bit of spray from painting something white in front of it. Although it'd be weird, it's just one dot. I've, I've spotted two things I need to fix, that's awful. Well, that's just the way it goes. This side's fine, let's look at this side. So, yeah, I used that, I used a little bit of Yand and Yellow for the top of the fins, and I used Gargag's Sewer for all the brown parts, including the trims on the wing, and Rattling Grime for the wood. I think it's meant to imply they're underwater in the official paint job, so I didn't paint the bases that same colour. I used Agros Dunes. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I was going to, but I decided not to. I switched to the sepia wash that Citadel does. Same that I did for the Thricefold Discord in the previous videos of this series, also for Warhammer Underworlds. That's what I settled on to kind of match them up as kind of like the beach theme, even though I think they are meant to be underwater with the kind of stuff that's scattering their bases. But either way, fun thing, he's just a fish that doesn't do anything really, from what I can tell. For the crab, I used that same orange I'm talking about. I applied it thicker with a wash over top uh, non oil specifically, I think, which I think I went a bit OTT with. This is also going to be absolute murder to get in focus because he is a weird shape and he is crunched up. Scrunched up, sorry. I can't honestly tell. I, I feel like that's not quite in focus. It's it's just one of those awkward miniatures like every so often. Actually, from this angle, there might be more for the. There you go. There we go. Used um, Skills of Horde for the connecting parts in between where the meat is showing in between the chitinous armor and a little bit of ooh, the Royal, oh, what's it called? Royal Slayer Flesh or something like that. It's one, again, one of the newer contrast paints, so it's not one I usually talk about, but it's um, I've used that for kind of like the coral growing on it or whatever it is, the polyps. And I've already described the base. Yeah, I applied the, the wash too thickly, unfortunately. <clears throat> Pardon me. So I don't like how this one turned out as a result of the mistake I made. That's why you've really got to be careful with not using too much. You don't want to use too little either, otherwise you don't get the effect. It's just one of those things that you kind of, sometimes you screw up and it goes a little wrong. And this, this is one of those cases. Only on this one. I don't think it happened much on anybody else. So then we have our three actual elves with the leader here at the back. Uh, this one has pale blue skin. The other two don't. I guess that's part of his lore. I didn't really pay much attention to that. So his skin I used, oh, what is that blue called? It's, it's Briar Queen Chill or the other one. One of them's a green tone, one, some, one of them's a blue tone. I used a blue tone one. I, I always say Briar Queen Chill and I always feel it's the wrong one, but I don't remember what the other one's called. But from the newer contrast range again. So his skin is that color, but for the rest of the colors used for them, I did them all the same. 
uh, and all the kind of colors across the bases again are also the same so the armor is the part where it's tricky i i don't know what the official paint job did for them because i don't think contrast paint existed when these came out so the official paint jobs wouldn't have used anything like that but what i settled on was uh oh that same orange for their tassels by the way but what i settled on is for the fabric parts which is like the trousers they've got little capes at the back here actually if we go to this one this might be a better look here uh like yeah she's got a bit of a when this comes into focus she's got a little bit of a cape through there and she's got her trousers visible here and if you turn it around here obviously you can see that she's got the back kind of cape there as well so for those i used a krellin green and then for all the armor and indeed the shield and parts of the helmet i just applied lead belt for silver i let it dry and then i did a wash with uh storm fiend blue storm something i think it's storm fiend it's again one of the newer contrast paints i'll flash the name up on screen if it's not so it's definitely storm something it's a blue i applied it very thinly just to give it the hints of color here i also use a little bit of um and in yellow here uh, not and in yellow that was iron jaws yellow either way and it kind of gave it that kind of blue watery reflection that the official paint job had and not close enough for my liking I applied non-oil afterwards to try and sink into the recesses of the armour to make it stand out a bit more. I, I guess it sort of worked a little bit in that regard. This one probably turned out the best of the three, I think. Uh, it helps that like she's in a pose where you can kind of see all her armour so it was easier to pick out. But in terms of the actual like effect, imagine something silver and you're looking at, looking at it through like coral reef water. I think that's what the official paint job was going for. I, I got as close to it as I could with the technical limitations of the paints available and also my general skill level. So, I don't know. It, it, it turned out okay, but not super great. And then finally, after a distraction double, we have Elethane, Elethane, whatever his name is himself. He has a pet snake and he is in focus now. There we go. His armor, I think, turned out the worst because it does have a lot of detail, but for some reason, I just I feel like when I applied the silver it was fine when I got to applying that very light contrast paint over it just to give it that kind of bluish underwater reflection it just didn't it didn't seem to do it it didn't go into the right recesses it didn't create the the detail I wanted and the effect looks kind of messy it feels like his armor looks kind of like melted which it, it was fine prior to me painting it so it is just a, a, a the painting job not coming out great uh, maybe it's the non-oil on top that didn't help, but it kind of, it doesn't look as good as the other two, I feel. But I tried, and he's got enough going on. But, like, that's the thing, especially with Sedel miniatures. They are kind of, there's a lot going on on their bases, especially for Warhammer Underworlds. I've mentioned it before, but because you're only getting, like, three to seven models at max, they take the care to make them really unique looking, dyna dynamic poses, dynamic bases. Just there's a bunch of stuff going on on them. So as long as you do even just a half decent job or quarter decent job at tabletop standard, you know, seeing it from like here, it looks fine. It absolutely does. But when you get closer, you see the blemishes. You see what could have been done better. You see what could have been smoother. You know, you can start adding dry brushing highlights, etc. to make it look better, obviously, if you are able and willing. But because they are so dynamic is the word I'll stick with they hide a lot of imperfection I forgot to mention but on the insides of their stupid looking helmets and back pieces whatever this is meant to be I used Agros Dunes for the, the fin parts in between doesn't really match up to the official paint job it's slightly more orange I feel but the orange paints I had were much too vibrant they, they would have stood out too much so I settled on just a a bit of a lesser color and I think that's about it for that I've, I've rambled on too much about them but I had some good things to say about how I think they turned out in terms of my paint job and some bad stuff and yes I'm going to leave the fish facing that way to show my shame that there's a single white dot there I must deal with and then also over here as well for the, the fusion core and the power armor oh it's, it's a very cursed day today so next from Elder Scrolls Call to Arms we have a big lad we have a dwarven or dreamer centurion 
or Centurion Master. I can't remember if there's stats for both versions, but they look the same regardless. And this is a large lad that comes with two Ballista. Now I have something to talk about regarding those even though they're not here, which isn't entirely fair, but their assembly is horrible for the Ballistas. Their legs don't fit in right, they don't match up to the holes in the bases. I actually got so frustrated with one I just gave up. So I don't know if when or slash if you'll see them because I just got way too frustrated with them. This guy went together absolutely fine. I would have liked some ins uh, instructions because there's parts where you would think, oh, that's just one piece, isn't it? Like for instance, these side parts on the arm, nope, they're a separate piece. Same here, that's actually a separate piece. In the inside there, that's a separate piece. And shoulder blades, separate piece. Back fin thing, separate piece. I had to go look up pictures of the official thing from different angles from their original reveal trailer for it just to make sure I was applying it correctly because the box doesn't show it from every angle so I wasn't 100% sure. So it is one of those situations where assembly instructions would be nice but it's rare for these models to need that but this was one such case where I really would have liked it. As far as painting him this was super simple despite it being as you may have seen when I showed off the base oh, from 2019. It's resin, it's modifious resin, it does the thing, unless after scrubbing it, letting it dry, you resort to using spray paint. And then even after that I would say do another very very light additional coat and it doesn't, well shouldn't in theory, be a problem. And it wasn't. It, it worked fine from doing that, spray painted it after washing it thoroughly. Did I actually? It's almost like a dry brushing I do on top of the spray paint layer just, just to make sure that every bit is covered. But in terms of painting it, this is the model doing all the work again. I coated it in Nasdrag Yellow, which is the golden-esque Citadel paint, uh, but still canon grey for the base. In the official paint job, this has like red inlining, making it look like a rug. But when I looked at it, I've been replaying Skyrim, which I think I've mentioned in recent videos. That is one of the Dweamer doors. Like, it is 100% the pattern on the various doors. So I got the impression when I was looking at this, he's like smashing the door or stomping on the door after breaking in. And this is just what the chests in Dreamer Ruins look like. So, you know, that's just a chest. But that 100% looks like one door of the double doors you find in every Dreamer Ruins. So I was like, I'm not going to paint it like the official paint job because I think they painted it wrong. <laughs> it's not a rug. It, no, in no way, shape or form can that possibly be a rug, right? It's got to be a door. I don't know. It looks more like a door to me, so I painted it just in the solid colour. Then, afterwards, I did a dry brushing of Necron Compound to add that almost silvery highlight to it that hopefully is a little bit... Like you can tell it's kind of shiny metallically. That isn't the contrast paint doing that. That's the dry brushing of Necron Compound. And then I also used non-oil on top of all that to just make the shadows a bit deeper. You can actually see the silver. Uh, I'm holding it there so it's catching the light, so you can actually really tell the, the silver from the Necron Compound is picking up all these parts here. Actually looks better, I think. Yeah, when it's catching light, it actually looks near. And I think my dog is about to bark, so allow me to do a very quick break and I'll be back. Okay, I think she's settled. You have settled, haven't you? I've got one more set of models to talk about and then I'm done, I swear. All right, so we do have some more stuff from Elder Scrolls Cult Arms. We have what was the Stormcloak starter box. This is, I think his name is Israeld Thrice Pierced. Do not ask him where the third piercing is, he will hit you. And then also an assortment of Stormcloak soldiers, three of which have great swords and one of them have a bow. Now you might have heard me talk about this before, also they've got some loose grass. You might have heard me talk about this before, but when Modifius started releasing starter sets for Cult Arms back when it first came out, I believe, there was two versions. There was a resin, resin version, which, you know, it uses like the resin that they use for basically everything. And then there was also plastic kits. I can't remember which were cheaper, uh, but either way, they did plastic kits. And the downside to plastic kits is no scenic bases. It's just flat bases. And these are just standard bases with plastic miniatures. But that is a joy to work with compared to normal modifius resin because it's plastic, which means although they were a bit annoying to assemble, once they were assembled, it's fine. Paint on the dry, uh, the the base coat. You're good. There's no the thing TM. There's no issues with that at all. It makes it much easier to work with. Plastic is so much better than resin. But you know everything we do nowadays is just the the resin, unfortunately, like that because that's from 2019. The starter box I had sitting for such a long time. I got it around the same time I got the Imperial starter box, which has five soldiers that I long have since painted. And if you look back in the series, that had to be like. It was pre-COVID, so it was a long, long time ago. I got this box at the same time, and it's just been sitting 
Part of the reason I didn't take it was because I just I never really sided with the Stormcloaks, so I wasn't really that fussed about them. I just got it because I thought, well, you have to, don't you? Because uh, it's part of the starter stuff. Um, but this most recent playthrough of the video game I've been doing, I finally sided with them for the first time, so it's kind of given me like inspiration to paint them. For instance, if we look at Thrice Pierced first, let me zoom in a little bit. Like, although this is probably one of the worst poses I've seen, um, it looks exactly like him in the game. Like it, uh, when I saw him in the game, I was like, "Oh, I painted your miniature the other day. That's definitely you." And sure enough, it was. But yeah, the pose, he's obviously like going in for a swing to like swing the axe up, you know what I mean? Like getting someone on the chin. But that particular pose, it, it reeks of kind of like Captain America from the Crisis Protocol core box, the original version, where it's just kind of, yeah, it looks like he's going to throw a frisbee. I guess he is, but it doesn't look great. And here with the axe in this position and his hand just sticking out like that, I guess it's okay from this side because you don't quite see it, but he needs to be like lower down and more like... He's really in the motion, but this is an early miniature, so I understand it. That's probably partially why it's not super dynamic. Uh, for all of them, except the parts that are blue that we'll talk about, I'm using a mixture of all the various brown contrast paints. Uh, Rattling Grime, Snakebite Leather, Gargag Sewer, um, uh, Wildwood. Basically just a mixture of all those. Gulman Flesh for flesh tones, and Live Ultra Silver. And the basis is just sand with Citadel Snow Paint and some flock. That's, that's it. For the blue parts of the Stormcloak armor, which I'll just talk about as we show, one of them has a really silly looking helmet, by the way, this guy. The other two have like the standard city guard helmet, but this guy who's gonna struggle to come into focus because he's so weirdly proportioned. Like his head looks very tiny, which I swear I wanna, there we go, there we go. His head looks very tiny and his helmet looks very stupid. But for the blue, I used Frostheart with non-oil over everything once I was done. And that really is about it. Now, it's not quite, the Stormcloak blue, but every other blue I considered, like Ultramarine blue, um, even a Krellin green is partially blue. They they were all too much on the like dark tone compared to the Stormcloak colors. So I decided to go too light and then bring it back down again a little bit with non oil because the alternative would be trying to highlight a darker blue and it just wouldn't work as well. I kind of like these basic guys with great swords, by the way. They're like super super stereotypical, just your normal guard looking guy but I like the poses of these two. Those two, nah, nah, these other three, totally fine. My only regret for the third guy that we'll talk about in a second, the one with the bow, I used, I think it was Iron Jaws yellow for his hair because he does have quite yellow looking hair in the official paint job. For his Vald Thrice Pierced, I tried using Agros Dunes for his blonde hair and it looks much more natural, as I hope you saw a second ago when I showed him off. So that's what I'm gonna be doing for blonde hair in the future because that is a much, more natural looking tone than I don't know a Ken doll over here is <laughs> it or a, this this looks like a Dark Souls player created character whose hair is not quite matching the theme of the game like it looks too yellow less yellow and more blonde is better so yeah if you want a decent blonde looking paint try Agros Dunes dog are you really gonna try barking again I've got this is literally the last miniature I wanted to talk about we're almost done it's almost over for another two weeks or so Okay, she's kind of left for a second, and is, is just choosing to cry people instead. It's, it's a skeletal horde for the fur trims of their armor, and it's Gargag's sewer for the interior parts right there. But, yeah, not much else to say about them. It was a joy to work with plastic miniatures for a Midiface game for a change. It's a shame that literally everything else I have sitting waiting to paint for the game is all just, uh, it's all just a resin. And so that takes us to the end of another Getting Stuff Painted update. Next time you will expect to see, or hope to see, the other two gunners, as I mentioned. Probably more Elder Scrolls stuff, more Fallout stuff. I'm just, I'm very in the mood to try and get through some of that right now. Uh, potentially starting on one of the miniature games I have sitting. Like, um, I'm just, I'm trying to work on various different things, but it's, as the mood takes me, I'm glad I started and just kind of went right through to the end with an entire warband for Underworlds here. Uh, I've still got a Warcry Warband sitting, primed and ready, so I just need to f work up the courage to start testing out how I want to paint those, because they're very large. So once I kind of, once you dedicate, like, this is how I'm going to do it, I'm, I'm stuck. So that's putting me off just getting started, but once I get started, they shouldn't actually take that long to paint. I won't give away precisely who I'm talking about. You'll see them. 
Uh, I've still got a bunch of Batman stuff literally sitting next here to the camera, but the game's unplayable, so I'm not really motivated to get on with them, which is a shame. I also secretly suspect that the game is on its last legs because they haven't released anything new for it since February. They've literally copy-pasted the rule set into a different game, which is what they did when they lost the rights to their Marvel game and made a DC one instead. Like, there's some red flags going up about Batman not being a thing much in the future. It wouldn't surprise me, they are also just a small company night models. So it's possible that they've just wrongly decided to focus on their Game of Thrones TV show tie-in miniature game, which I'm sure everybody absolutely loves. I mean, they probably do love how it plays, because it's just Batman 3rd Edition, but hey, well, that's a story for a different day. If you want to show me what you've been painting, feel free to do so if you're in my Discord or on Blue Sky. I link all those kind of things down below. Or you can spend them by a Twitch stream and I can show you to the Discord that way as well. Oh, and I also stream on YouTube via my gaming channel, though. And there's a siren in the background. Oh no, I mentioned YouTube. They're coming to get me. Thank you for watching. Enjoy painting your pile of great shame. Get it done. Show it off. It doesn't matter if you're good at painting or not, as long as you enjoy the process. And I shall see you in about two weeks, unless I'm in jail. Until then, stop for now.